lessons involved content. Welcome back to Pisces TV with Montana B. As we get started, this is a very special reading as it marks about one year since our infamous Twin Flame trilogy. Okay, so if you are new to the channel, the links are in the description box to the Twin Flame journey that we have been following for almost one year now. So as today is November the 11th, that is our special 1111 Stargate portal, which happens every year, of course. But there was something very special and significant that has happened along the last year, a couple of years. So I welcome you into the channel. Uh, check the description box again for those links if you're interested in your own personal readings, uh, private consultations, my products and services. There is a link to Etsy, which I am going to find another platform for our store. So stay on the lookout for that. But for now, Etsy is still up. Others of you um, that are returning, I appreciate your continued support. So y'all have to leave me comments on how you guys have been and what you've been doing uh, over this last year between you and your twin flame. So I can't wait to hear these stories. Maybe we'll go live a little bit later. Um, check the community board for specials. I do have a twin flame special. Now this reading is special because not only does he give us tarot insight as to what your person is doing and thinking, um, also advice and challenges for you, how you could help the situation as you guys are mirroring each other. It also gives a natal uh, input, an astrological input, as far as your compatibility and where the challenges lie um, and where your strengths are. So you can work on you know, the positives and not be taken down by the negatives. So again, welcome, welcome, welcome to this very special reading. And if this is your first time on the channel, sorry for the long intro. Just wanted to fill you guys in with what this particular reading is for. So I am also going to include an insert from the, I think the part four, part one, I don't know. We'll include a couple of inserts from the original video as they were so captivating, um, they were so interesting, they were so confusing, they were so loving, and kept you on the edge of your seat. Like a love that's so true and so meant to be, but still kind of taken apart where you guys may have been in separation and your person is with the person learning a lesson and you're with the person or by yourself learning a lesson. And it's like every time it goes this close, you know what I mean? Something happens, right? But then there's supposed to be this, this point where you guys are both at this vibrational match to what it takes or what it what it is what it becomes when you become one okay so we will get started with that and it's like this is how we're learning our lessons someone may be lacking love in their life setting boundaries because of what the other one did and the other person is just out there on their own can't find anybody like you so just kind of moving and shaking honey maybe even going through a struggle but then there's a sudden plot twist a surprise this is confirmation that you guys are uh, in separation possibly or this is the unexpected that we'll be discussing so let's get into the reading um, first I want you guys to just hear a small clip uh, from the original video and then we'll go ahead and get started be some kind of twist and turn where the universe like sweep both of y'all up it's like both of y'all are mirroring each other because the swan came out both of y'all are trapped in cycles. You trapped with them. They trapped with them. And he got to let them go. And you got to let him go. <laughs> um, All right, Pisces. So we are going to start with the introduction, which is our icebreaker. First card out, we have the sun. We have the chariot. The sun could talk about the divine masculine. The chariot could represent the runner, the chaser. We will see. For some of you, the five of pentacles may be a matter of the past or it could also be in the present. Okay. Now with the sun card, not only does it represent the divine masculine in the situation, it also represents the sacred unions, the awareness and the enlightenment. I love the sun card. It talks about the vibration as well. And this could be the person coming toward you or situations that both of you are kind of like mirroring running from but it talks about being more assertive as you can see the sun is also in the back of the chariot card um, we have the pentacle here 
Okay, and the pentacle does talk about the lesson. It talks about life, the practicality, the earth energy, whereas the moon is kind of like this other side. And in addition to the connection that you guys have, now we saw the king of wands in the shuffle. The king of wands also represents this awareness, this third eye, the lizard, right? The sixth sense, this inner knowing. And as we saw the queen of swords, who could be representing this moon energy, maybe this king of wands has his or her queen of swords on their mind. Could they be coming toward you? Is it something that they're running from? And then here is clarity or confirmation for whichever way that'll go. Now, the conflict in this situation, if any, the conflict or the challenging aspect could be for some of you guys that it's on pause. I did also just see the Four of Swords. But here we have the Four of Cups. As, like I said, I saw the Four of Swords with the Mother of Pentacles. So there could still be third parties involved. There could be financial issues involved or a need to release something. With the Four of Cups, this talks about having more than enough. So maybe the King of Wands has had his or her fair share of whatever they've been doing while you guys are in separation. Or this could talk about the situation being abandoned. Now look at the moon, uh, the moon symbol um, on both of these cards where it's in the third eye. Or when I said the person um, could be thinking about you. The Four of Cups also, like I said, if not talks about an abandonment issue, um, something being undone, going unnoticed, something not being accepted. So is it the offer that's not accepted? Is there something someone isn't accepting? Uh, someone may feel abandoned or one or both of you have even abandoned this situation completely. Now, I see the Father of Pentacles with this Four of Cups where I saw the Mother of Pentacles with the Four of Swords. So here is this pentacle on the chest and on the heart center as a talism for the chariot. So what does that say for both of you? Where well, we have the Father of Pentacles or maybe the masculine energy in the situation may have abandoned the situation. And for some of you, the Mother of Pentacles is just resting, like hasn't truly let go, but is no longer fighting for it. And the Four of Cups, I'm sorry, the Four of Swords also talks about a victory of some sort. So for those of you that have just chosen to do away with this union, it doesn't happen every lifetime. It may not happen this lifetime. Someone may have received their victory as in um, maybe master the things that they were to master, keeping themselves together, organizing their lives and doing their part where the other person is still working on, you know, self mastery is still learning from the past getting to this Father of Pentacles energy, but may have abandoned or forgot something along the way in regard to this relationship. So let's go ahead and get started, you guys. Now here we have the Four of Swords, which talks about rest, recovery, victory. So there we have that. It's coming back out. Maybe this is the energy of our Queen of Pentacles. This could also be you, but this is the current energy. So things may be on a pause. Things may be on a rest. Victory could be assured for some of you, but here's the nine of pentacles, another energy of independence, as well as an energy of winning, okay? So it's like no one really takes a loss here. Others of you, this is like a recovery from detachment. So it's like if you no longer have this connection, okay? Because some people were confused about the twin flame connection where we, it said that you share like a chakra system. Um, others, it's this cord or this connection which could be karmic. You know, we have karmic um, connections and sacred unions and stuff like that. The Nine of Pentacles talks about being released and the Four of Swords is sometimes like this recovery. So if you have been released from, I think, the, the binding, the karmic relationships, the past, the problems, you're currently healing from that. Your person may also be healing for, uh, from that. Now, some of you, there will be a reuniting or a celebration. Others of you may be in separation because of the things that have come in between you guys. Now, as I mentioned, the cords being cut or these low vibrational energies kind of being moved out of the way. Here is this five of swords. So some of you here may have been even at odds with the twin flame. So instead of like longing for each other and can't be together, there may have been some battles some um, verbal conversations that didn't go so well, some negative thoughts surrounding the situation. 
and I, I take a I take a bet that there was someone possibly hiding their feelings. You know, someone not really it could go both ways because you guys are mirroring each other. So someone hiding their feelings and not being honest about that while the other person is like put in hiding, really not being appreciated for what they are or what they mean to the situation. As we still look into the chariot card and notice the same symbolism of the chariot where something may be moving forward now um, when before it could have been hidden from you or there could have been some deception and some shade within that. Now, moving forward, what I do like is whatever was kind of left out in the cold, whatever was hidden, whatever didn't receive the attention or whatever the um, tower card represented a sudden change. could be a download for some of you guys or some type of energetic shift. The six of wands talks about your awareness and the blood. The butterfly is always a transformative kind of energy where we're rising from the sticks because I did see the ten of wands. We're rising from the sticks. Uh, receiving the recognition we deserve so someone may be you know moving a little bit forward in the activation whereas they may have been the slower one before and then suddenly realizes something this realization could lead to some messages some communicating maybe you guys live at a distance so it may involve travel um, or just taking action in a certain situation so maybe they want to take action toward you you could have wanted to take action to move away from this. Or maybe if the whole situation has just run stagnant, there may be some movement there. Here in the past, we here is our strength card, which is our infinite, the romance, the lion, the Leo. So when we talk about the 11-11 Stargate situation, this looks like a little gate. And maybe the gate is opening, right? We do talk about the Three of Cups being the trine. Um, with the triangle or that third eye energy and notice our little stargate line here has the infinity symbol right there in the same position where the moon lied okay so we will take clarifiers on that now what's crowning your thoughts and keep in mind it could be you or your person what's on your mind i call this the strength of the matter unless there's something that um, isn't working too well here we have the queen of swords so the Queen of Swords crowning your thoughts just talks about wisdom, which is why you may have learned from the past. Like maybe your person isn't the King of Pentacles. Maybe you are where it's kind of like you've learned from the past. And if the past continues to repeat itself, we like to apply knowledge, which is wisdom. So it's like I've been to this before. It hasn't worked in all this time. I'm setting healthy boundaries, you know, taking that loss because for some of you, you know, this was a really strong connection. So for the mother of swords to come out as crowning you, she's the one who is like, I'm not in my emotions. You know, I'm taking my own advice. I'm moving forward. I'm setting healthy boundaries. Now, she's still open and receptive, you know, and warm. People don't give her credit for that. But it just talks about wisdom. You have learned a lot from this situation. And that is um, admirable. OK, uh, in the future, we have the high priestess. So. Here is it's like a double dosage of that Mother of Swords energy where you have spiritual gifts, a spiritual connection. Maybe someone isn't talking in this situation. You guys have not been in communication and we still have that moon energy here. So it's like here is that divine feminine energy. Here is that divine masculine energy. And it's like this may be even the integration with spirit where it's like the two lovebirds and an extra element, which is this trine here. Okay. So the high priestess usually sit back, doesn't say anything. The mother of swords is that same energy. So someone is definitely not communicating here, but is receptive and waiting on the truth. The challenging aspect is this father of pentacles. So the father of pentacles being a challenge for some of you, it talks about completing a cycle. It could have been letting go. It could have been being more practical and focusing on something else. Or maybe this third element that is coming in has something to do with relationships that you may have moved on to, a relationship your person has moved on to. And then here we have in the center, <clears throat> excuse me, the ideal couple. So the conflict is that you guys are probably in separation. Notice that we also have the four feathers around the nine pentacles, which talks about logic, which, which talks about recovery, which talks about healing. So healing something from the past and releasing something. And it's like these stars are a lot different from these, 
So if I took this pentacle and put it with the nine of pentacles, maybe that would be ten of pentacles. And it's like something does come together after this period of separation. So that's kind of cool. Now in your hopes and fears. All right. And that's kind of cute too. Um, here we have the empress. Okay. So we still have that energy of some of you are like learning lessons. Like you have discovered your truth or the truth about this whole Stargate situation. That does happen because there are many theories. You know, some people say that the twin flames will be you. And it's kind of like an energy of your higher self, right? So others of us um, have come to kind of like realize that the soulmate or the relationships that you thought you had with a person, those are like karmic situations or like bindings that a lot of you are being cut out of and released from. But, you know, some people still say that there's this soul connection um, with you and this person. Now, if you guys are still in separation, the story of the high priestess is that, you know, the the soul of her one true love burns within her. So she never truly really falls in love the same again, if ever. And then double dosing that with the mother of swords, who is also considered the widow um, who is separated from, you know, her lover. And I say his or her because y'all get so, it's God's listening to this too, I guess. But <laughs> these talk about the separation, um, you know, the lost love, right? And this talks about the strength to stand in your own independence, to not be driven by these situations. And so that was the lesson within itself. So that's when even I question, like, is this like a twin flame soulmate relationship or do we misunderstand twin flame soulmate relationships where it's just someone who pushes you to kind of grow and be your best self because they get you in ways um, or get to you in ways that other people can't. So if you took a loss from the love, but you gained from the lesson, that is also a story that I've heard of twin flame connections where you guys learn through each other. Okay. So it's kind of like. Um, others of you with this Ten of Pentacles in the environment, this is one and one. And notice that we have the masculine energy here, the feminine energy here. So it's like someone is really going to have to learn a lesson. Someone may be really worked on with uh, spirit. The other of you is, you know, doing you in your abundance, being released from karmic situations. Um, this is also a difference between a single woman and the empress is usually a married woman. So we're going to take clarifiers to see what exactly that is about. Because if we're still in this third party situation, there may be other obligations or bindings between these people, um, which is why they're in separation. And it's like the environment says what is best, what is practical, not just spiritual, you know, not just sexual, not just intellectual. But the Pentacles talk to, talks about practicality, finances what works best for me, what works, works best for you, um, family traditions, you know, how things have always worked and things of that nature. So it even goes back to the other um, element that we've had in this trilogy or whatever I called it, where it was like a love spell or something and you guys were under a curse, you know. And then here we have, you know, um, faded to constantly being separation. And for some of you, it was like the mother and someone else made a deal, you know, or you know, y'all heard them stories where it was like, um, what did they say? There was like the mother, the father, and then um, someone else came, um, made a deal or something like that. And so because of this deal, because they talk about ancient things and I've even heard people say, you know how they say it affects the generations to come, like seven generations or 10 generations or whatever. So somebody does something. Um, Go to the restroom, sweetie. Go, go to the restroom. Somebody does something, makes this deal, um, and it affects the generations to come. So you guys have been in separation or kind of cursed being apart. That's for some of you, not for all of you, but I have had that um, story come, come up. So let's go to the outcome, and then we'll start taking clarifiers. Here we have the Ace of Cups. Could be a divine union, and it could be you guys completing a cycle with this world card. Or it talks about guaranteed success, uh, change in fate, luck, and cycles. So we'll sit it there. And then I have, again, you guys not talking. 
the, the seven of wands just talks about some type of block where someone has maybe become aware of a situation they're still kind of blocking it out and it's like kind of still dealing with karma kind of still dealing with their past here we have the king of pentacles with the strength card you know finding the courage and the strength to kind of move on here we have the queen of pentacles and see how that see how that works the king of pentacles with this queen of swords energy the queen of uh, pentacles with this father of swords energy and then some type of ending or transformation to come of that so when it talked about third party situations and then here comes like what what are we going to choose what is the outcome in that a lot of you guys are still kind of like uh, dabbling with other relationships and in making those decisions so now when we start with the four of swords which talks about logic recovery and healing okay and then there's nine of pentacles like i said that has these four feathers and in tarot the four feathers has always has also been um called swords you know the feathers and the swords so it's like why do we have the four swords here and then why do we have the four swords connected to um the nine of pentacles so here we have a bunch of potential here we have again the commitment so we have the son of roots representing the four of swords so victory recovery slow and steady kind of wins the race so when i said that it was on pause it's definitely on pause the nine of pentacles on pause being released maybe something is on hold because you guys are being released from other karmic situations but i feel the outcome does result in a union this union does cross the ace of cups so it also crosses the ten of pentacles so somebody's gonna have to make a decision here with the father of pentacles at the bottom of the deck and then here is that chariot again uh, chariot again where like both things have to work out both ways it has to make sense there has to be love you have to be at a vibrational match and it has to be a healthy situation so that means that we have to relieve ourselves from all of the lower vibrational energies and all of the karmic debt with that five of swords and that earthworm being slit now in the lesson with the three of cups some of you guys like i said coming together others of you maybe not here i have capricorn and i have the magician kind of being burdened okay with this ten of wands but for others of you, we have the Wheel of Fortune, which is another 10. So now you guys got 10 and 10 in the center of the reading. The web talks about co-creating with the universe. The web is also associated with what's crowning your thoughts. Um, so where we talk about karma, good karma, bad karma, the world card changes. Here is the Mother of Roots. So the Mother of Roots can be grounding herself. I feel some of you... Um, may have been a little bit more aggressive or adamant about this situation than the other person <clears throat> for the mother of roots to be um, the clarifier for the strength card it's like a duality so if this is like duality within yourself or duality within this relationship the mother of roots is someone who's organized and someone who releases things and so with the the um, strength card could be representing a false person as well. I just want to put that out there. Um, also, it just represents the strength, the courage, the humility, and the ego, and the differences between all of those things. And then just kind of like releasing resentment, releasing the emotion, uh, releasing fears, and e any kind of attachment really to the situation. It's a real nonchalant kind of energy. Maybe even focusing more on your household. But now we have the Mother of Roots, the Father of Pentacles, the Ten of Pentacles. And it talks about, look at that, it talks about timing and the Wheel of Fortune. Like when, when, is, when is it going to, when are the stars going to align uh, for you guys to come into this union, right? Now the Six of Pentacles uh, is representing the Mother of Swords. So this is you, this is your person, whoever energy this is for. I think it's you um, because I said crowning your thoughts. This is you not accepting anything less than what you're, what you're worth. Okay. Um, understanding what you put into something and what you're getting out of it. All right. It also talks about a reward or something. So for the mother of roots and the father of pentacles to be here and then other energies to be here. I do feel like you're wondering when because you've done some internal work. 
like you've done what you felt you guys were supposed to do in this situation and maybe that's why the king of pentacles came up with the four of cups which talks about abandoning the situation and maybe you really tried and worked toward the situation which is why you were committed you know and you will be victorious in love even if it's not a divine union um or this person it will be true love or at least a love that you enjoy and someone else enjoys and it gives back like you two give back to each other so that's cool now with the high priestess for some of you that may have ultimately taken a loss um, from a twin flame, I do see the temperance card on the bottom of the deck. I'm looking at the ten of wands. So it's kind of being pulled in multiple directions, not really knowing which way to go. And then here with the hangman and the tower, something unexpected happens that brings this together. What this is, I'm not sure. So it, a lot of cards came out and I just want to see what was on top. Give me one second because they're sticking. Oh, okay. So we have the Empress kind of connected to this situation. The Nine of Cups, which talks about friendship. So notice that the Empress was surrounded by two nines. The Empress had the Nine of Pentacles. It's like being released from a co-parent, possibly. And then we have the Empress and the Nine of Cups is, you know, also contentment or fulfilling a certain obligation if children or family was involved, there could be a conflict that you guys are working um, to get through. Like I have an obligation or a fulfillment to this situation, or even if the Empress represents the earth and someone's purpose, like it's like, what is my purpose? I'm trying to find me and who I am. And then love comes secondary to that. And the same energy with the high priestess where it talks about fulfillment um, could also be wish fulfillment. So for some of you, it's like, you may have been single for some time, but true love is coming in because, like I said, the Nine of Pentacles represents someone single. The Empress usually represents someone who's married. And then here we have this um, energy of fulfillment, some type of wish fulfillment. And then we have temperance. So it's like some of you pack up and move on from a situation. Others of you with this temperance card, there may be a reconciliation of some sort. Now, the Father of uh, Pentacles, I do feel, was clarified with the hangman. Um, if not, this is the cord of the connection. So, there are some obligations. There could also be a very strong physical attraction and a need to kind of balance that. Now, this is where I feel the Father of Wands that presented itself at the beginning of the reading is out kind of like sowing his oats, not really finding the love um, that they feel they deserve or want either. Um, and that's why they change relationships multiple times or don't commit and uh, settle into relationships because it's like it's not really what I want. Others of you, this definitely talks about frustration. Like some of you, this person may have um, been a trigger. You know, this person really got you to a place. And I feel that that was the connection for this twin flame situation is to grow somebody up. But it definitely talks about a connection from the past for you here. And this cord um, could be a connection. The sun of feathers that represents uh, the south node, which represents the past, tells me that maybe even dealing with past relationships, uh, frustrations, creative energy, you know, where that ego, um, that anger management issue that I was talking about under the mother of roots, this could have been an issue, right? Somebody just wants to be cool, maybe even start as friends because they're looking for a more nurturing partner. Um, if this has anything, it does have a strong sexual connection, but it's like, it's something about, you know, the, the Empress, this nurturing, this wife-like energy, um, over an obligation. So someone definitely doesn't want to feel obligated, um, to a situation. And that's understandable too. Now with the 10 of pentacles, I knew it was coming. We got the chariot with the father of Ruth again. So, for me, it talks about completing a lesson and moving forward, getting blocks removed. For some of you where this union comes together, you guys are learning the same lesson, which is in Leo. So, I would bet that you have the same um, house or astrological uh, connection where Leo may fall in you guys' charts. And if not, it just has something to do with the past life connection and this Stargate situation. Okay? 
Now, I have uh, done some traveling, and I know from what I've seen that the Stargate, when it comes to like the military base, um, there's a lot of creative activity there where I joke about the command center. It's kind of like um, they say that, you know, other, I don't want to sound crazy, but the other energies, people, whatever you want to call it, something's out there, right? And they talk about the moon and how we keep going to Mars and stuff like that. But they call it the command center. And it's if you look at it on Google, it's um, its location says uh, planet Earth. So I don't know if they jokingly do that because I know it was a movie made and everything too. But it's kind of like if, if this particular command center is on planet Earth, where are the other command centers? And it's like, who are they communicating with? Now, this is real. Beyond the movie, this is an actual base um, in Colorado. And you guys know that I took a trip last month down there just to be nosy because I knew that this day would come. So when I think about, if not in this life, in the past life, that some of you have even had military backgrounds or have grandparents, great-grandparents, or ancestors that have military backgrounds, um, that is tied into that somehow. And this year is tied into that somehow because the pole shifts um, from Capricorn and something else back to um, Gemini and Sagittarius. So that was significant, even though it does that like every, I don't know, 10, uh, 12 years. It's just been everything's like more significant this year. Um, when I think about the the things that have transpired in our government and with politics, um, and then looking back at some of the times that the Stargate last did something this big, it talked about the Cold War, the Soviet Union, um, and what we're going through now. So it's 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 kind of deeper than just like you and your person. This is like past life shit. This is like other lifetimes. This involves the earth and the moon or the, what is it? The Sirius, um, what is that, Sirius? Um, and then we have the Pleiadian star seeds and all kind of collectives. So this isn't, this isn't, I don't, it's so big and, and it gets exhausting. And then I have my own life to try to live instead of like uh, chasing, trying to figure out what's what. But I will, if you guys are bored, you know, or just have the time and energy, there's a lot of things that you can look into regarding this whole Stargate portal where Gemini comes up and we've been talking about like remote observation and this telepathic connection where you and your person are always connected or you can you can feel and see what they think and they can feel and see what you're thinking and you guys are never apart. But it's like somebody's not talking and somebody wants to do um, want us to talk all the time. It's crazy. It is definitely crazy. So look into that. OK. Anywho, when we get over here to this Empress, where, like I said, children could be involved, um, growth could be involved, happiness could be involved, not wanting to feel obligated to situations and actually have true love but for some of you it's definitely like i said children for others of you the she could be if if your person is a him right and um there is a connection there or a lesson to be learned there that person could be manipulating the situation uh with a child or with children okay um and it's kind of like hanging hanging it over their head. I have the three cups here behind the Wheel of Fortune and this web. So somebody could be caught up in a web. Um, the two of cups here with this daughter of cups could be our three cups. Could be. The six of cups with the daughter of cups and the two of cups could be our nine cups, which talks about wish fulfillment. So for some of you, it's separation uh, due to some type of manipulation. For others of you, there is an offer coming toward you that I feel you'll be happy about. Because look, in the near future where we have the high priestess for the spiritual connection, um, maybe even where the third party or the mistress gets out of the way. 
for others of you it could be pregnancy uh, okay that's interesting but these nine cups here you have um, you have union you have happiness and then you have the offer and then the son of horns talks about the offer and moving toward you okay so I like that it's, it's about a lot of romance and being fulfilled as well so if this relationship did not fulfill you uh, in your personal growth for you to continue to go and grow um, I do feel